Hi, Anissa Coy here with this week's Ask Anissa video column. And this week, uh, we are going to talk about uh, what is going on right now here in our industry. And that is Hurricane Harvey. And I just really want to say my heart goes out. There is some really uh, awfully affected areas uh, there in Texas. And I've seen some very disturbing pictures and videos uh, on Facebook and on the internet internet and it just really makes my heart go out to all of those people and definitely love seeing all of the pouring out of people not only in our community restoration community but all over that are coming in with their boats and helping people and doing search and rescues and and all of the animals that have been saved and things like that you know that is why I love this industry so much because Unfortunately, it's necessary to have this restoration industry. I wish it was, wasn't, because then that means we would not have natural disasters like this and need to help people. But this is an incredible community of people that come together from all over the country to help when an area is in need. So with that in mind, I, I actually want to talk about, kind of interrupt the normally scheduled programming of Ask Anissa about questions, although I have gotten several questions and emails sent to me in the last few days about, the, about Harvey. But I actually want to talk a bit about a couple of threads that I've seen going on Facebook. And I've seen a lot of chatter online about people wondering, okay, so is it too late if I haven't already left? You know, so-and-so has already been there for four days and they're telling me now that if I'm not here, I might as well not come. You know, is what's the time, what's the right time to come down and do and take care of a situation like this when there's a cat loss? So I want to talk about that with you. I want to talk about timing. And you know, this week on RNR MagOnline.com which is probably where you are watching this right now. Uh, they have a great article that Tim uh, Hull with uh, Vail and Management and Associates wrote, and it's uh, something about calculated, what does he say? It's right here, The Great Gamble. And he has a great article talking about cat losses, and uh, which you should go read. But what I want to talk to you about are just a couple of things right now that you really need to think about. If you're sitting back at your business and you're not there or on your way and you're asking yourself, should I go? Is it too late? Number one, I'm going to tell you straight up right now, it is not too late. Okay. I want you to ask yourself some questions though before you go. All right. In fact, in some areas, it's too early to have gone. It's only not too late. You would be way too early. As you can see with the media reporting, there's houses still with four to six feet of water in them. Now, obviously not all the areas are that affected or still in that condition. Water has receded in areas, I guarantee it. But of course the media is only gonna show us the really horrible things, right? They want us to see all the devastation. So there will be outlying areas that, yeah, if you wanna get work in those outlying areas, you probably ought to get going or should potentially be there already by now. That being said, I want you to ask yourself some questions, okay? I got about four of them here I want you to think about before you decide to pull that trigger. But I also do not want you to get into analysis paralysis because there will be a point where it's gonna to be too late. If you haven't already gone, you're, you're gonna miss the boat, so to speak. I, I, I didn't mean a pun there. So there, here's the things I want you to think about. Number one, where are you gonna go? I know you hear about Houston's flooded. Well, do you have any idea how big Houston is? That's like saying Los Angeles is on fire. Well, Los Angeles also has umpteen million suburbs, right, around it. So you need you need to really get an, a good idea and understanding demographically what is in the Houston area, exactly what areas are affected, and where are the outlying areas, because right now that's who's going to need your help and be ready to get going on work in those areas. The other thing is, is can you legally work in Texas? Can your company come down there and legally work in Texas? Every state has different laws pertaining to this. And there are some new laws that have been passed, for instance, in Florida this year on people coming from out of state and doing cat loss type scenarios and that kind of work. So you need to be aware of what those laws are. The third thing that I want you to ask yourself and, and consider is what kind of infrastructure is there for you, okay? Do you have power in those outlying areas? You're like, okay, these areas have the water receded, they're ready to go, they're doing claims there, that's where I'm gonna go. Okay, is there power? 
not, do you have a generator? Are you able to bring power with you? The other thing is how close are uh, support facilities like fuel for your rigs? Do you, how far do you have to go drive? And by the way, what's the cost of that gonna be? You need to consider that because they're probably, it's gonna be pretty spendy, but how far away is gas for your rigs or gas to be able to put in your generator? And the other thing is drinking water. You know, do you have that available or do you have to bring water in? If drinking water is not readily available in your area, I can almost guarantee you should be bringing absolutely cases and cases of that. You know, when we did cat losses back in Maryland, we were actually, we, we the National Guard, was actually going through every rig and seeing who was coming into the area when we were coming into town to work on some of the, the stores. And then we had to curfew. They came around with bullhorns and they made us all leave by dusk. So, you know, there's some different things like that that you need to know about the area as well, okay? The other thing that I want you to ask yourself is, you know, can you partner up with somebody uh, that's there already? and or maybe possibly locally. Now, I wanna tell you two things about partnering up with somebody. One, it can be an awesome idea. Second thing is, it can be the worst idea you've ever had, okay? So you, you really wanna be careful about partnering up with someone because you could really wind up doing a whole lot of work that you never see payment for, okay? You need to know what you have to do to protect yourself in that way. Hopefully, of course, the best scenario would be to partner up with someone that comes highly recommended to you or that you already have an acquaintance with or know or mutual friend maybe with. So those are just, you know, kind of some things to think about. That's a whole topic in and of itself and maybe I'll do a video on that about JV partnerships. Uh, working with other companies, especially in a cat loss situation. But for right now, what I want you to think about are just those four things. Where would you go right now? What kind of support and infrastructure do you have right there in front of you? Can you legally work in the state? And is there someone else who's already there on the ground going that you could potentially partner with and or work with or for, okay? you know. Some of you watching this may be a very small company, you might even be a newish company, and you may have never done a cat loss before. It's okay to go in to a cat loss scenario and especially partnering up with someone else and learn. You know, you don't have to go in there in 10 days and knock down 100 grand to have success. Doing things on a smaller scale, maybe you don't go in there first time in a cat loss and just knock it down and become a millionaire, but that's really not. Um, shouldn't really be your focus anyway, okay? Your focus should be to serve, to know that you're going to be able to do a good job and take care of your business as well back home at the same time, and um, be able to take away from this so that the next time that there is a cat loss scenario, and I guarantee you that there will be, uh, in fact, this time last year, I think we were all talking about Matthew, weren't we? But anyway, um, there will be another cat loss scenario. So learn from this one. Even if you just go in working with someone else, you maybe don't make as much money as you could have going in on your own, but yet you build your uh, tool belt and your capabilities so that next time there is a large cat loss scenario like this, you're gonna be more equipped to go out and help more people. And yes, you will also be able to make a lot more money. All right, well, I really hope that you found this video um, valuable and helpful on some of these points. I do have a four-part video series on cat loss and talking about being prepared and what you can do that I've broken down the four big steps to get prepared. Be sure and watch that here on the channel. And don't forget to go read Tim's article, uh, The Great Gamble. It's a really good article about being prepared, but I wanna also, again, remind you, do not become paralyzed in analyzing this either because you will miss the boat at some point, okay? Well, I wanna thank each and every one of you who are heading to the um, loss and to Texas and who are already currently there and helping people out. I wanna thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. What you're doing is incredible work and I'm so um, proud to be part of an industry where that's what we get to do is go help people in a, in a time of need and give them hope that this too shall pass. All right, well on that note, I wanna wish you all a very safe and wonderful rest of your week. And you have a great day, I'll see you on the next video.